All right, so I have here Magello's Mission Gold, 36 seven milliliter tubes. This is their third set, their set C. There are three versions of this palette. There is a US version, a European version, and a Korean version. I am not sure which one this is. I just know I have set C. Okay, um, so we're gonna open this up. So it comes in a unicarton. And uh, Magello is definitely known for their nice packaging and also their quality palettes. They do sell palettes on their own, similar to this, without the paints in them, that you can put paints from any brand. If we look here on the back, it does have a rundown of the colors. Swatched on there, their names, their transparency, their light fastness. We're gonna go over some of that information today and I'm going to explain to you what that means. So let's continue opening up this palette. So now that we've taken it out of the box, let's see what it looks like when it comes, when you open it up completely. Okay, so you have your palette. You have some pamphlets here. This one is an explanation for all their colors. A little brochure of all their colors. Which I think you should keep. They have many different sets. So you should just think about what colors would be right for you if you're building a palette from scratch. This is definitely more along the lines of a pre-set up palette. Like we're gonna set it up but the colors have already been picked out for you. We're not, we're not doing that this video. I'll show you that in another video. Okay, so we have five keywords here. It says quality pigments and superior light fastness, color uniformity, exceptional solvency, non-toxic and non-chemical additives, cadmium-free cosmetic grade preservatives. Me personally, I don't mind cadmium colors. I actually prefer them in a way. You can get just as good colors without the toxic chemicals. So I do appreciate that they are thinking about the environment and thinking about the people and taking the toxic element out of it. But I have quite a few cadmium and other colors that have heavy metals in them and it doesn't bother me one bit. Okay, so we have four packs of nine tubes, and they are seven milliliter tubes, so they're not full-sized, but I'm used to buying core watercolors that come in five milliliter tubes, and they also come in 11 milliliter tubes, whereas the standard tube for the watercolor you know, community is like 15 milliliters. So it doesn't bother me to have the seven milliliters at all. This was inexpensive. I think I got it on Amazon for about $32, which is pretty good for the amount of tubes that I'm getting. Okay. And they're kind of like divided up into color classes. So it's like a color, a color family here. just so you get a look at them, okay? Now for the palette itself, it is made out of plastic. Um, you do need to prep this palette before you go pouring your paints into them, and we're going to get into that now. So I did already open up and prep this palette. When you first get it, it's pretty slick and shiny because it comes from the factory, you know, they have oils for the machine so I don't know if you can see where the sheen here that I rubbed on the mixing surfaces uh, and I roughed it up a little bit uh, there is a reason for that untreated the water will beat up and so you'll have like these specks of separated water and you won't be able to properly mix your colors so I took a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and I scrubbed all the oil you know, the natural oils that come on there. I scrubbed it all off. And then I took a dry Brillo pad, like a gentle one, not like the steel wool ones. On this side, if you can see here, and I just roughed it up just a little bit. And so that's how, like, that's why you can see those strokes there. And that allows the water to not beat up. So let me just 
This one I treated a little bit, but I didn't treat as well as the other sides. So you see what I mean? Like the water here wants to separate more. I mean, I still wiped it down, but, and here I think I did the best job of it where the water really does stay together. So that's the reason for cleaning and treating your palette. Just so you can utilize the mixing surfaces, okay? So now that your palette is ready for you to place color, you have to take out your tubes and decide how you're going to place everything. Are you going to place them primaries and then secondaries? Are you going to place them as if they are in spectral order? How are you going to do it? I like to do it spectral order, rainbow order, you know, uh, yellow, green, you know, yellow, orange, red. I just go down the line. So I'll have like the warm colors and then I'll have like the cool colors. Warm colors meaning yellow, red, warm browns. Cool colors meaning green, blue, cool purples. But then you have some gray areas. So you really have to think about it because you can have a warm red and you can have a cool red. So to give you an example of what I was talking about, here we have permanent red which if you look at the color on the tube, is a very warm red, it's almost an orange. Then we also have Crinacridone Crimson Lake, which is almost a purple. So do these reds go near each other or do they go on the opposite side of the palette? That's for you to decide how you like to set up your palette. While I arrange the tubes, let me teach you about pigment numbers. Paint colors are made up of pigments, binders, flow agents, and possibly other ingredients. Professional quality paints have a larger amount of pigment, making them more vibrant and also more expensive. Paints can contain a single or multiple pigments. I prefer no more than three in a tube because I like to mix my colors and the more pigment combinations in one tube, the more muddy the mixes with other paints will look. Before the number, you will see a letter code. Pigment color codes. PY equals pigment yellow, PW pigment white, PR pigment red, PV pigment violet or purple, PB pigment blue, PG pigment green, PBR pigment brown, PBK pigment black, PO pigment orange, and I avoid using paints that have pigment white in them unless they are a pure white gouache for highlights. I don't like pastel colors. Some pigment numbers are commonly used and are well known, like PB29 is ultramarine blue. Now let's talk about light fastness. Light fastness is a property of a color, hue, pigment, or dye that describes how resistant to fading it is when exposed to light. The ASTM International regulates light fastness ratings. However, some companies use their own testing and rating system. ASTM has one being excellent, two being good, and three being poor. Every professional paint tube must have pigment info like light fastness rating, a warning if it contains heavy metals like cadmium or cobalt, and pigment transparency or opacity rating. Mission Gold uses stars for its ratings, and its rating system is the opposite of the ASTM standard rating. Mission Gold has five stars for extremely light fast, four stars good light fast, three stars light fast, two stars limited light fast, and one star less light fast. They also use symbols that represent transparent, semi-transparent, semi-opaque, opaque, non-staining, semi-staining, and staining, and all of this will be displayed on the paint tube uh, for the color. So whenever you create your own palette and organize it all and pour fresh paints, you should always make for yourself a palette chart uh, where you swatch all the colors out, how it would look inside the palette. 
So this is me um, organizing how the palette looks, you know, setting up the squares and everything on a piece of watercolor paper. And then once I have poured all the paints, I will swatch them out on this swatch card so I know what paint well has what color. So now that we have sketched our diagram of what the palette is going to look like, we are going to fill the wells the same way we set it up here. And then we are going to swatch the colors on this diagram. So while I pour the paints, I'm going to let you know the name of the color, the pigment number, and the pigment information of the color. So this is lemon yellow, PY3, semi-transparent, semi-staining, and good light fast. Then we have permanent yellow light, PY154, transparent, semi-staining, extremely light fast. Then we have permanent yellow deep, PY65, semi-transparent, semi-staining, good light fast. Yellow orange, PO73 and PY65. Transparent, semi-staining, good light fast. Orange, PO73, PY65, semi-transparent, semi-staining, good light fast. Vermilion, PR112, PO73, semi-opaque, semi-staining, excellent light fast. Permanent red, PR112, transparent, non-staining, Excellent light fast. Quinacridone permanent rose, PV19. Semi opaque, semi staining, excellent light fast. Bright opera. This is BV10 and PR122. Transparent, semi staining, and limited light fast because it's neon. Rose matter. PR176. Semi transparent, semi staining, and good light fast. Quinacridone Chrisman Lake, transparent non-staining, PR202, excellent light fast. Red Violet, PR122, PB1, PB29, semi-transparent, semi-staining, excellent light fast. Bright Clear Violet, PV3 colon 2, PB29, and PR122, semi-transparent, semi-staining, limited light fastness. Cerulean Blue Hue, PB15 colon 3, semi-transparent, semi-staining, excellent light fastness. Cobalt Blue Hue, number 1, PB29, PB15 colon 3, semi-transparent, semi-staining, excellent light fastness. Ultramarine Deep, PB29, PB15 colon 3, semi-transparent, semi-staining, excellent light fastness. Prussian Blue, PB27, semi-opaque, Staining, good light fastness. Peak up blue, PB15 colon 3, PG7, semi transparent, semi staining, excellent light fastness. Viridian, PG7, transparent, semi staining, excellent light fastness. Van Dyke Green, PG7, PBR25, semi transparent, semi staining, excellent light fastness. Hooker's Green, PG36, PBR25, PY150, semi-transparent, staining, excellent light fastness. Sap Green, PG36 and PY150, semi-transparent, staining, excellent light fastness. Yellow Green, PG36, PY3, semi-transparent, semi-staining, and good light fastness. Greenish Yellow, PY150, PG36 and PY65. Transparent, staining, good light fastness. Olive green, PG36, PY150, PR112, PBR25. Semi-transparent, staining, excellent light fastness. Yellow ochre, number one, PY42, PY150. Semi-transparent, staining, excellent light fastness. Raw umber, PBR7, PY65, semi-transparent, semi-staining, good light fastness. Burnt Sienna, PBR25, PR112, PI150, semi-transparent, staining, and excellent light fastness. Light Red, PBR25, PR112, PY150, semi-transparent, staining, excellent light fastness. 
Red Brown, PBR 25, transparent, semi-staining, excellent light fastness. Van Dyke Brown, PBR 7, salmon transparent, non-staining, excellent light fastness. Sepia, PBR 7, PBK 7, semi-transparent, non-staining, excellent light fastness. Indigo, PB29, PB27, and PBK7, semi-transparent, non-staining, excellent light fastness. And then lastly, I have Ivory Black, PBK, semi-opaque, semi-staining, and excellent light fastness. Hey guys, editing Nell here. I went too fast and skipped a paint. I'm so sorry, but uh, you get the gist of it. So after pouring the paints, I make a chart of how they are set up in the palette, like we started earlier, but I swatch all the colors. The purpose of completing a more in-depth swatching is so we get an idea of how the paints behave, how they look in mass tone, and how they look watered down, and how they flow, and how they layer. The swatching I do is not as detailed as it could be, but that is because I am mostly focused on vibrancy and flow.
So now that we have done a color chart where everything is placed, I'm gonna do a more in-depth swatching. So first, I have all the names except for four, four that I'm likely not going to use very much in this palette. I have all the names and their pigment numbers written out. On those, I'm going to do a wet and wet wash, and then on the blank ones, I'm going to do a mass tone and then water it out so that you can see both. So as you can see, some of the footage here got a little lost in the sauce. But um, yes, yeah, so I'm going in with each one so that you see how they behave. A lot of artists make the huge error in skipping this step. Uh, but if you don't do this step, then you're not going to be very familiar with your paints and then you'll be surprised when you have a beautiful painting that you're working on and you're like, oops, didn't know the paint was gonna behave like that. So yeah, you should really swatch out your paints, like not just a color chart that I have showing where the paints are poured, but like a detailed swatching to see how they behave. And I'm gonna be honest, I do not enjoy this step at all. Like I'm totally watching anime while I'm swatching all of this for you. I absolutely assure you I'm watching something because this is so boring to do, but it really is super important. So while you watch all of this, let me just talk about the making of this YouTube video. So I filmed this back in July or August. Christmas was two days ago, guys. <laughs> This video took me a very long time to produce. Filming by itself, I think took me uh, three to four hours and I did it in one clean shot because I did not want to get out of the groove of filming. Once I get myself deep into a task, like I'm like super focused. So I pushed on until I finished every single step and then uh, remember that once you go through all the swatching and stuff that you do need to let your palette dry for two to three days like just leave it open for it to dry and i put a little bit of the tube into the palette but i still have the tubes like i can make probably one or two other palettes with the paint that i have left in the tubes i didn't uh, fill the wells completely using the whole tube Sometimes I like to paint fresh from a tube and not dried paint, so I make sure to leave some left over. And I think while doing this part, I was totally watching Tokyo Ghoul, which right now is my favorite anime. I've seen it about four times within 2020. It's been quite a year, guys. You know 2020 has been quite a year. And I don't know why, but I absolutely love Tokyo Ghoul and it keeps me focused on whatever art thing I am doing. Uh, so yeah, I have that playing in the background and then I just silence the audio for the video. So yeah, I'm just watching TV while I swatch. This video took a lot of technical information and vocabulary. So I did do some research and I did have a written out script that I read from. So I'm sorry if like in the beginning parts where I'm giving you like important information, if I don't sound like I'm flowing very well, but I have like five pages of notes. <laughs> I worked really hard in this video, but I've noticed that when I watch YouTube videos, I actually do enjoy when the artist like tells me important information and then like switches the vibe to just like talking to me about stuff and talking to me how they made the video. So yeah, I'm just giving you guys to relax. Rambling now, I'm literally just sitting here talking to an iPad. All right, so let's talk about these paints a little bit. Um, I'm gonna be honest, so in the few months of having this palette, I have not used these paints very much. I have played with them a little bit, but I think I'm still adjusting to painting with them. The first professional paint I ever bought was Core and they are very much not like traditional watercolors. They don't behave the same. They have a lot of flow and they're very staining. Then I bought Mgram, which have honey in them, 
but they also have a lot of flow and are extremely staining. And they honestly behave a lot like core. They just lift a little better. These Mission Gold Magello paints behave nothing like those other two paints. They lift up very easily, even when I don't want to. Their color is like so vibrant, like I'm used to some fading. These don't fade, like they like bam, smack you in the face and are like heavy vibrancy and color, which I love, but I'm not used to. So I accidentally make colors too bold and they look a little garish at times. So I'm adjusting. Also, these are more prone to cauliflowering because they behave more like traditional watercolors and I'm not used to working with traditional watercolors. So I feel like I need to relearn water control with these paints. And I really do need to discipline myself because these are excellent paints. The problem is not the paint. The problem is the artist. I have not adjusted. Um, learn your paints, know your paints. And I've gotten very accustomed to one way of painting. So now I need to learn a new way of painting because these paints are excellent quality and they were rather expensive. So yeah, I should use them. And the colors are so beautiful, they really are. I've done a few different portraits and paintings with them and the, the colors stayed extremely vibrant. So why did I buy these paints if I was happy with my core and M gram paint paints? Like I really didn't need these paints at all, but I wanted to attempt to work with watercolors that did not flow, that stayed exactly where you put them. Um, because I do understand that the core and M gram paints are not like most watercolors. I just didn't realize how different it would be and how much they lift. Like you can glaze over them, but just understand that whatever is going on the layer beneath is going to move. So you have to be like very light with the touch. You have to be very decisive with your strokes. Um, so yeah, still adjusting even after how many months? <laughs> also, this is why it is extremely important that when you are shopping for paint, that you learn the properties of that brand of paint and make sure it is good for your kind of painting style. Now, I was purposely trying to challenge myself, but if you're not trying to do that, find paints that work with how you paint, okay? So now that I have swatched everything out, we have to let this dry and let those dry. The paints are gonna take about two to four days to dry so that we can move the palette and it won't slip around in the palette. If we were to try to close the palette now, move it around, all the paint would just run into each other. And what happens when you mix all the colors? You get a version of black. All right, friends, so after about five months, this is what we have. This entire thing is what I call my studio palette. Uh, this upper part right here, I would call like my daily palette. The top two rows are core watercolors. This row and this row are engram. These two tubes are from Daniel Smith. This here is also Moon Glow from Daniel Smith, which is that tube. This one is Aqua Rose Daniel Smith. And then the rest of this is Magello. I've gotten to know this palette a bit. It has been well used, well loved, and I am acclimating to uh, getting to know the paints. I will probably follow up with like a demonstration video on how um, these paints perform, uh, but that'll be at a later date because this video is already pretty long. I'm in my onesie because my studio is in my garage and it's December and uh, around 39 degrees. So I have a few layers on. <laughs> All right, friends, so I've had to do this outro a couple times now because uh, the previous file was corrupted. It's now winter, it's a couple days after Christmas. Uh, when I first started recording this video, it was back in July, I think July 15th. So I took a very long time to get this done, but I'm glad I'm wrapping it up now. Uh, please remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell for updates every single time that I post. And thank you for watching this video, friends. Happy holidays.